Welcome guys to my Let's Play The Cat Lady. Where we left off, we had a huge story bomb, and I would give you guys, well, notice in advance. I already recorded a good chunk of this game, and my recording program decided, nope, 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 not gonna happen. So, I'm playing most of this game with the knowledge of what I know until the last chapter. So just a heads up, this may be pretty quick. But anyway, let's get out of here. Let's go find Mitzi, which she's already in. She's in the dining room. With the psychopath. With a candlestick. Of course, this guy's just crazy. We're gonna approach him. Son of a bitch. What do you want me to do? I don't understand. And of course he wants us to play the piano. So let's play the piano. Yes, those kitties are vicious carnivores. Anyway, let's get Mitzi out of here. She hasn't got much time. I have to save her. All we need to do is move the chair. Not sit on it, but push it. And basically pull Mitzi up. Stand still, Mitzi. I'm gonna be right back with a knife, and I'll cut you down, all right? Kinda hard not to. But that's the end of that chapter, and we're finally on the chapter six. I, I find this one very amusing. You're, you'll see why in a second. Well, not a second, but later on.
really going to do it, aren't we? Yes, Mitzi. You will finally get your closure. Maybe I will get mine too. Did you take that map with you? Yes. We can always refer to it if we get lost. I've lived in this building for many years. I won't get lost, Mitzi. But it'd be a good idea to cross people off. Once we're sure it's not them, it might give us a clear picture of how far we've got. Right. Okay. Good luck, Mrs. A. Mitzi. Are you sure you're feeling up to it? This recent incident, it must have been pretty tough for you. I felt better, Mrs. A. Now, I'm still curious what they did with the body. But anyway, we do have Mitzi now. We can use her for, like she said, what it says, locks, lock picking and asking for advice. But unfortunately, I know what to do here. So let's examine this door. Joe Davis lives here with his wife. I haven't seen them before for a while, though. Maybe they're gone for holiday. Sure. Sure, totally. I think I heard something. No, it's probably just my imagination. And let's knock on the door. I guess they're not in. That's great. I never liked them much. Okay. And open the door. It's locked. So, what you need to do then is Mitzi and pick the lock. Can you unlock this door for us? Blimey, you don't see these very often. This is a very special lock. It would take someone much more skilled than me to open it. Great. I thought you were an expert. I am, but this lock is just beyond me. Why would anyone need one of these here? They must have something to hide. Is there any other way we can get inside then? Well, not unless we can find some plastic explosives, or a pneumatic drill, or a key. Yeah, because I'm sure there's a key lying around here somewhere. Well, what can I say, my friend? Let's try to think positive. Yes, let's try to think positive. We need to find the key. Um, but let's start from the bottom up. And investigate this entire apartment. And we'll talk to this lovely lady, who's known as the Dog Lady. Pure opposite of, you know, Susan. She lives in flat two with a stinky mong girl of hers. I can't remember her real name, I've always called her the Dog Lady. Needless to say, we are not the best of friends, but we usually do our best not to show it. So let's give her a jibber jabber. Hello. You live on the first floor, am I right? Yes, that's correct. Flat two. And you're Susan Ashworth, I presume. I've been meaning to talk to you, actually. Really? Is something wrong? Well, it's those cats. I understand you're trying to do a good thing, but it's become unbearable lately. This can't be sanitary for people living here. And I'm sure it's not allowed by the council either. Are the cats bothering you? Yes, they are, actually. They usually stay outside anyway. I bet you hardly ever see them. I see them all the time, actually. Ever since the Morrisons from Flat One moved out last month, your cats seem to reside permanently on my floor. And that sofa, my god. They're always gathered round it like it's their shrine. It was Morrison's responsibility to dispose of it, but they just left it there. And a whole load of other rubbish, too. Okay, that's not my fault, really, is it? But you encourage cats to come here. You feed them. Everyone knows that. Every time I take William for a walk, he gets upset and tries to chase them away. Look, they're not my cats. You're Susan Ashworth. The cat lady. We all know what you do. Everyone's sick of those cats, and I am too. 
Brian said he will get in touch with animal control if things don't improve. He already did. Really? Well, I certainly don't see any improvement on first floor. It's still completely overrun by these filthy creatures. He'll have to talk to them again. I hear they've run out of business recently. Then he'll have to find another one. This is just not good enough. Yes, they totally went out of business. Totally. Did you say they sleep on the old sofa? I didn't say they sleep. Have you not listened to me? I'm beginning to wonder if they ever sleep, actually. They just keep climbing up and down the wretched thing. They're noisy. They leave germs all over the place. They've scratched upholstery and the paintwork. And William keeps chasing them. He's so quick, I can't hurt him most of the time. What if he runs off and gets lost? I'm telling you, we've never had such problems before you decided to bring here these homeless devils. Yes, yes. Though, you know, if she's worried about her dog getting lost, you should properly take your animal and get proper identification. That will solve half of your problems. And also put them on a leash when you're going outside for walks. Bayou. Who's William? William is my dog, of course. He's 12 years old, you know. He shouldn't be running after cats at his age. I have to go now. See you later. So yes. Apparently those two do not get along in the slightest. Alright, so let's look at the cabinet. It looks heavy. I think it meant to be a strong place. Or to be a storage place, not a strong place. For cleaning products, vases, and junk mail. Those who have lived in this house as long as me will know there's actually a door to the basement behind it. No one goes down there anymore. It's not safe, apparently. Let's search. There's nothing useful inside, just piles and piles of leaflets. And let's try pushing it. I could push that cabinet out of the way, but I don't really want to be seen. If only we could get rid of this old witch somehow. We'll work on that in a second. Um, let's stare at the vase, or flowers. Someone put freshly picked flowers in a vase to brighten up this grim looking hall. They're like a bunch of roses on a long forgotten Maybe grave. Maybe one day you will forgive flowers, Mrs. A. Maybe. Or maybe not. And let's get them a quick smell. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to push it. Don't worry, Mrs. A. Could have happened to anyone. I'll clean it in a minute. But please. Be more careful in the future, yes? Yes, we will be. You be more careful, nosy old witch. Um, now what we need to do is take pieces of glass. And those will have a purpose in a second. Now let's look at the mailbox. It's a communal mailbox. It holds all tennis mail in separately locked compartments. Let's open. No mail for Susan, sad panda. Now they're locked. I wonder. I wonder if I could do this beforehand. Um, let's get Mitzi to lock them. Do you think you can unlock this mailbox? Sure, but not with that woman over there looking at us over her shoulder. She's always been a nosy old cow. So yes, we need to definitely get rid of her. So with the ground floor basically examined, let's head up to the first floor. Okay, so let's look at the sofa. The cats seem to be attracted to it, but why? It's just an old sofa. The Morrisons left it here when they moved out. There are some stitches on it, and they look fresh. Has to be mended recently. All right, so with that hint, use the glass on it. And let's reach inside. Hey, look at this. Valerian root extract. Cats love it. It has the same effect on them as catnip. They go absolutely crazy for it. You found it inside that sofa? Yes. I wonder how it got there. Maybe the Morrisons wanted to leave a goodbye gift for that woman and her dog? Yes. Well, they would. I always thought they were reasonable people. 
Oh, what a shame they moved out. Yeah. Um, let's go back in the note. From Flat One, we apologize for cluttering the hall. The removal company has been called and they will collect the sofa and the chairs soon. We're sorry for the inconvenience, but we're just... Sh but we're sure you can put up with the with these few items for a bit longer, just like we put up with your dog for all these years. Morrison's. Good. They did not like the dog one bit. So let's examine the door. The Morrison family used to live here. They moved out a little while ago. Let's... Why not knock on the door? <laughs> There's no one home. Of course not. <laughs> let's open the door. It's locked. And let's listen. Even though no one's home. <laughs> Only silence. Okay, so we need to choose Missy. Missy, I choose you. Go. Would you like to try your famous lock-picking skills on this lock here? Let's see. A young child could open this lock with a piece of wire. That's fantastic. Have you done it yet? No. I can't work when you're looking over my shoulder. Do you mind? No. Sure. I'll just walk away for a minute and stare at the wall if that's what it takes to get this done. Thanks. Okay, so time to ex examine and take, so we're going to take the spanner. And that will become extremely useful in a bit. And let's go look at the giant hole, because it's a giant ass hole on top of the ceiling. This hole must have been made quite recently. Is Joe Davis flat up there? What is he thinking, digging holes in the floor? Right on the edge, there's some black, shiny object. I can't quite tell what it is from here, but it looks like some kind of statue. There's no way I can reach it. That's too high. If that table on the right wasn't damaged so badly, I could probably stand on it. But all it, but as it's all rotten, that I probably only fall and break my neck. Well, she come back in like an hour or so. She should be fine. I'll have to find another way to get that statue from up there, and we will. We definitely will. Uh, let's go to the table. It's rotten through. Just to emphasize that table. This is the sunny side of the building. My side is always covered in dark, or so it seems. Clearly this place is empty. I reckon we can cross it off the list. And we have one place down. That is fantastic. This is a... What does depression feel like? Well, it feels like all I want is to die, but I have to live. That's funny. Most of the time I feel like I want to live, but I have to die. Oh, let's look at the socket. It's just an ordinary electrical socket. Nothing special. So let's get out of here. And we'll take a look at the dog lady's place. Or what we can so far. Let's look at the radiator. These radiator radiators are some of the few remnants of the old days. Most have been taken off the walls. Those that are left haven't been working for years. Good to know. A grumpy old woman lives here with her ugly dog. I hate dogs. We, we get that. And just for shits and giggles, let's just knock on the door. And run away. Alright, so let's go to the second floor. Okay, S which I guess there's no point because we live here. On to the third floor. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, let's take a look at the bicycle. It says Brian doesn't own a car. Every day he rides his bicycle to get to work. It's not just his pride and joy, but also his only means of transportation. I bet he'd be gutted if someone happened or something happened to it. Yes, let's kick it then. As much as I'd like to, the noise would only alarm him. I'm sure I can think of a better way to get back at Brian. Well, there's the crank. How funny would it be would that be if the crank went missing? He probably wouldn't even notice until the very last minute when he's all ready to leave for work with no time to spare. Then let's remove it. It can't be done by hand. I'll need the right tool to remove it. We do have the right tool. So let's use the spanner. That'll teach you not to mess with the cat lady. Okay, from there, let's just run over here quickly and examine the rake. It's been hung out here to dry a long time ago. Let's borrow it, or we'll bring it back. We're gonna get rid of that dog lady. So what we need to do is use the valerian accent, or valerian extract on the rake. Okay, rake. I think we're getting closer. Now let's head back to the first floor. And from there, we need to use the rag on the radiator. We can, well, let's examine. It's soaked in valerian root extract. Cats were moved to wherever I put this rag. And smell it. I don't find it very pleasant myself, pro but probably, but I probably would if I was a cat. Then let's use it. Come on, guys. The body moved over here. And let's go check on them. Where are they? This is A. They're they're ninjas. <laughs> well, aren't they quick? This dog is making quite a racket. Someone should complain to the owner, don't you think? Definitely. She should put that broom down for a minute and sort a dog out. Okay, so let's go down to the ground floor and complain. Because our dog is very noisy. No wonder the neighbors moved out. Your dog is making horrible noise. Can't you do something? It's probably because your wretched cat's upset him again. Poor William. I'd better check on him. William! Come back, my little friend! Are you sure the cat'll be alright? Please. These cats can easily outrun some old mutt. And indeed they can, so let's get the mail bit done. Do you think you can unlock this mailbox? I think I can most certainly unlock this mailbox. Then do it quickly. Someone can come in any minute. A little room for the master locksmith. Really? Could you step away towards the stairs and turn around, please? And of course Mitzi has performance issues, so let's give her her space. And while we're at it, you know what, we'll take the broom. Why not? We're gonna need that broom in a little bit. Master criminal, if anything. Done. Here's all the mail. Hide it in your pockets and let's get out of here. It was mostly junk mail and leaflets. I threw those away. Okay, let's see what kind of mail we have. We have a letter for Pauline and Joe. So let's examine Pauline's. It's addressed to Pauline Summer. She's the young mother who lives in flat 8. Not here. Oh, yes. We have to kind of leave the area. Um, but right now, let's push this out of the way since our nosy tenant is not here. I'm going to push this cabinet out of the way. I remember there was a door behind it. 
It's too heavy. I don't think that's gonna work. Are you kidding me? I'll show you how it's done. Stand back. There. The door everyone's forgotten about. Wow. You're stronger than you look, Mrs. A. Yeah. Perhaps I am. She she does have some hidden muscles. Okay, let's go downstairs to the basement. And see what we can find. Water supplies for the whole building can be switched off here. There's no need to do that for now, though. For now. Uh, extension cord would take that for sure. Whenever we need it. Um, coal chute, let's examine it. It hasn't been used for many years. All flats have central heating these days. Can we open it? It can't be opened by hand. I'll need a crank. What a quinky dink. We have a crank. Alright, let's examine. It's filled with coal, dirty stuff. And let's examine the tin, the paint. It's red the color of blood. Okay, can we open it? The lid is stuck. Dried up paint is holding it firmly like glue, so no. I'll need some tool to pry it open. We'll get to that. And can we take it? I'll take the tin once I manage to open it. It's of no use to me right now. Well, damn it. And let's examine the sign. Quiet Haven Hotel. Never heard of it. What is this sign doing down here anyways? It does have a purpose. It's just not in this game. <laughs> Hmm. I think I've got an idea. I know how I could pay Brian back for all that he's done to me and the cats. Brian. The guy from Flat 6, right? Yes. Brian. That nasty piece of shit. He deserves to be punished, you know. And this wedding dress will be perfect for this. You ever heard the legend of the cat widow? The Cat Widow? No, can't say I have. Well, you're not from around here. But I'm sure Brian knows it. He grew up in this city, just like me. So, what's it about? It's an old story about a ghost cat who takes a human form to haunt her killer. Wow, that's... pretty crazy, Mrs. A. Do you really think we can pull it off? Yes. Yes, of course. We just need to prepare. A good costume will do the job. This dress, we can alter it. We'll need some red paint, too. Are you sure about that? I promise this will work. And it will give us a chance to check his computer. If he's got one. Okay. So what do we need? Well, basically, we need three things. Red paint? There's a tin here. We could use that. The dress will make a great costume. We just need it in black. Also, it should look damaged. That's important. Cat Widow is a ghost after all. I'll need some scissors for that. We need some kind of mask. I don't want him to recognize me, obviously. So yes, we need to find those things, and we will eventually. But I'm going to end the episode here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you're enjoying the series so far. I apologize if I know what's going to happen in this chapter. I, I really enjoyed my what I was doing recording-wise, and unfortunately, shit happens. But I would do the best I can. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. Like, comment, subscribe so you can keep up to date on my videos, and all that fun stuff. And with that, you guys have a good day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!